Hello everybody, it's your friendly digital technology librarian Christy here. We've reached another Friday, so of course I have another Film Rec Friday ready for everybody out there. Now we are finally in December, so that of course means all of the year-end holidays are just around the corner. This entire month we are dedicating theme weeks to the holidays, and I'm super duper excited for those. Some of the weeks are going to feature films that are a little bit more unconventional, and I'm super psyched about that, but this week we are all about British holiday films. Um, you know, there's just something about a British sensibility in the tone, in humor, in, you know, the look of things. It, it just sort of screams English. And, you know, I always feel like watching English Christmas films really kind of kicks off the season. So I thought what better way to start December than with a week all about British holiday films. And, you know, it's weird because, you know, the movie doesn't have to take place in England. It doesn't really have to be like Christmas or, you know, holiday oriented. But there's just something about a British made story that really kind of permeates everything. So it sort of supersedes whatever setting they've put it in. Um, and, and I hope that comes across with a couple of these films in particular. Uh, you know, as always, all of the recommendations are available to you via your Mylan Berlin Library card. Uh, I have a couple today that are available solely on DVD and Blu-ray disc. Uh, I'll make sure to point those out when I talk about them. Uh, otherwise, they are available via our streaming video services. Like always, those are Hoopla Digital and Canopy. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the recs. Okay, kicking things off with one of the selections that I mentioned is available solely on DVD and Blu-ray disc, and that is 2003's Love Actually. First of all, can we mention the fact that this movie is almost 20 years old? I cannot believe that. I loved this movie when it first came out. I still absolutely adore it. Um, I would actually describe this as kind of a modern Christmas classic. Uh, it gets referenced on tons of those best of lists year after year. Um, I know a lot of people my age who have kids now, we're starting to show it to our kids. It's just one of those films that's really become a must watch at holiday season. And it really is kind of a lovely one wonderful story. Um, stories, actually. So Love Actually is a, a, a film of written and directed by Richard Curtis, who's super, super famous British director and story writer. Um, he has put together this cast that is absolutely incredible. You've got Emma Thompson, the late great Alan Rickman. You have Bill Nye, um, Akira Knightley in one of her earlier performances. I mean, it's, it's really fantastic. So in Love Actually, you have multiple storylines that all get to feature at some point or other. All these uh, vignettes also sort of have interlocking story pieces too. Each of the characters is somehow related to another in some way, shape, or form. And so while we're getting all of these little glimpses and pieces, they all kind of fit together in this huge, huge puzzle. And it, it's it's just so well done. So many intricate plot lines that get pulled together in like a really neat, fabulous bow. Um, you have some stories that are kind of not throwaway, but a little bit lighter and fluffier. And they're not like, there's not a whole lot of emotional depth. It's just like, oh, it's cute. There are a couple that are definitely along the, the lines of like the slightly more raunch style British humor. And then you have some that are really emotionally sensitive. And, you know, they talk about really serious themes like grief and how people overcome it. And, you know, the ways and the challenges that that comes about, you know, depending on your age and your situation, it includes, you know, stories about, um, you know, how a marriage can change and shift over time. I mean, there, there's so much going on and it doesn't feel disjointed, which is kind of crazy considering the breadth of topics that they're covering and how many stories they're covering. There's some like absolutely adorable meet cute style stories. There's one in particular that features Hugh Grant as the prime minister. It's a little bit, you know, out there, but at the same time totally works in a way. And, 
you know, there are iconic moments. Uh, I don't know that this is a spoiler at this point because it's referenced everywhere, but there's one dance sequence that cannot be missed. Um, it's not a musical. It just happens. It's, it's, it, it just happens. <laughs> but Love actually is one of those films that, you know, I think kind of may like meets expectations for anyone who's watching it. You know, if you're looking for something a little more sentimental, it's there. If you're looking for something a little bit silly, it's there. If you're looking for like a classic rom-com, that is definitely there. Uh, but it also has like some serious drama too. There's one sequence within this film that I think is one of, for me, the, the, one of the most, one of the most phenomenally well acted moments. Like it's, it's just like a turn on the dime blip, you know, when a woman's life, when she realizes her life isn't what she'd always thought it was. And there it's, it's absolutely there's no dialogue whatsoever in this one particular beat, but the actress who plays that role is just so incredible about it. And it, and it's devastating, but it's also absolutely brilliant. So if you are someone who is also looking for just really exceptional acting, I'm telling you, it really does not get better than especially that one moment. Uh, but in, throughout whatever tone we're going for, um, all of the actors really, really hit the notes that they need to. Um, I mean, you even have a very small, ridiculous role played by Rowan Atkinson of Mr. Bean fame uh, that is gloriously dumb and fabulous. Um, so it, it just runs the gamut. It, it hits all the perfect points. And it's one of those films that I go back to over and over. And it's not really the holidays for me until I've watched it. So if you get the chance, please do check out Love Actually. If you've never seen it before, you absolutely need to. And if it's been a while, perfect time for a refresher. Okay, my second recommendation is also another one of those films that's available solely on DVD and Blu-ray disc, uh, and that is 2006's The Holiday. Now, The Holiday is a little bit of a mishmash. It's both British and um, very American, but at the same time, the British moments are so British. <laughs> um, uh, in particular, like one of the sort of shots that we get as far as scenery goes is like the image in my head that I get when I think of English countryside at Christmas, it just, it just absolutely is. Um, so in the holiday, we have two women who are both at sort of difficult points in their lives. It's right at Christmas time and they realize they 100% do not want to be where they are. Uh, one is a trailer editor in uh, Los Angeles and the other is a uh, journalist in the UK. Uh, she has a little countryside English cottage that she lives in, whereas the other character lives in this fancy pants Los Angeles pad. <laughs> I don't know how better to describe it. I mean, it's 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 quite fancy. Uh, and the two of them end up on this home swapping site and they see each other's locations and they decide they're going to switch lives for Christmas, which is so ridiculous and out there. But at the same time, works in movie land uh for whatever reason it just does uh and so this english uh journalist ends up in los angeles on her vacation in this woman's home the uh trailer editor ends up in the english countryside and antics ensue it doesn't hurt that these women are played by of course the english journalist is kate winslet who is just such a phenomenal actress i I just, I will watch pretty much anything she's in. I love her. Um, and the trailer editor is played by Cameron Diaz. I think she's so much fun. She's very much that uh, sort of quintessential rom-com actress for me. Like she was just such a huge presence for such a long period of time that I, if I, if I see her name in it, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a solid rom-com, right? So you've got these two women who leave, live totally different lives. And then they've essentially swapped their home settings for the holidays, just for a breath of air. Cause they both need it. One is they're both dealing with odd shifts in interpersonal romance uh, relationships. Let's put it that way. So I will say I am always like, 
I am more intrigued by Kate Winslet's storyline, the English journalist's uh, adventures, than I am in the trailer editors, despite the fact that the trailer editor is in England. Uh, but at the same time, they're both fantastic. And one, for most people, one or the other will resonate more. And I, I think that's sort of the design of the film. So um, you have both of them running in to meet cute situations um Kate Winslet has multiple not romantic but also platonic and it's so adorable I mean really truly um Kate Winslet's uh, storyline includes uh Eli Wallach who is one of my favorite actors he passed on a few years ago but he was in all of those old spaghetti westerns he was the villain and he's also been in a ton of ridiculously f famous movies he's just He's just a fantastic, fantastic actor, and he plays this uh, older gentleman that Winslet's character uh, ends up interacting with, and he's a huge part of her growth while she's in Los Angeles. I mean, I I love a story where love can change things. I mean, I I sort of rolled my eyes at that, and but but I do. I think that's really really sweet. But I love that it's it's really in part her relationship with Eli Wallach's character that really, you know, bolsters her and makes her realize that she's, she can own her own uh, trajectory in life. Um, Jack Black, I adored him in this. He can be kind of hit or miss for me sometimes. Like I love him in certain films, but you know, it, it doesn't always work for me. He totally does in this. I mean, his sort of odd quirks, are a little bit more subdued, but they're still there. Uh, so you you don't get the sense that this character is so over the top that it can't possibly real. You, he, he seems like a real, if quirky, guy. And, and the two of them are so adorable. It, it really just is so cute. And then um, Cameron, Cameron Diaz's uh, romantic partner within her storyline is Jude Law, uh, who has... I'm not going to talk too much about that because there's more... Um, like surprising elements to that storyline. So um, her growth involves a lot of the things that she discovers about herself in within the interactions that she has with Law's character. But yeah, I mean, you have some other really fantastic uh, uh, character actors and uh, supporting actors within this story that are also really familiar and phenomenal. Rufus Sewell is always great. I mean, he has a very small role in this, but he plays it to a T. Uh, and, and, and I just really, really think this one's a fun one. Um, rom-coms I know are not for everybody. Uh, this one isn't life-changing. You know, the last one I talked about was Love Actually, and it has silly moments, but, and, and, but it also had like heavy, like ridiculous, intense dr drama too. This one is definitely much more on the light, fluffy side. It's pretty traditional rom-com territory here. Nothing earth-shattering, but it does it so well. You know, back in the golden age and era of Hollywood, it's not like, it's not that any of those like highly toted films were necessarily groundbreaking work as far as storyline or plot. It's just, they were so well executed. And I think that's where this one, you know, really shines in the execution from, you know, the acting and the casting to the directing to the settings. I mean, the English countryside stuff is so gorgeous. It's like, when I think about English countryside Christmas, that is what I think about. It's it's just perfect. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for a very classic feeling rom-com about the holiday season, about love and romance, this one is it. It's just, it's just great. Uh, again, that's holiday. Uh, it's available on DVD and Blu-ray through Queen. Okay, moving on to our digital recommendations. This one is available on both Hoopla and on Canopy, uh, and that is 2017's The Man Who Invented Christmas. I am so happy that I found this film. I'd never watched it prior to putting things together for this week, and I'm so happy I did. It is really, really fun and well acted. Um, so, I grew up loving Charles Dickens. I read The Christmas Carol every single holiday season. I really just like stories about both the author and then adaptations of his work. Uh, and this one is interesting because it's a fictionalized biopic of 
a very specific period of time that uh, the period of time when he was putting together a Christmas Carol and it's just really enjoyable. It's, it's got a lot of drama. It's definitely, I, it's got a ton of drama in it, but it also has some lovely light fluffier moments too. It's, it's, and, and I think the way that this one works so well is because of the acting. Your Charles Dickens is played by Dan Stevens of Downton Abbey fame. Uh, he does a good job of both somewhat silly, silly uh, dialogue and beats, but also with some really heavy moments, especially moments of revelation about himself and how he's gotten to the point he is. Um, uh, you've got Christopher Plummer playing uh, Ebenezer Scrooge. Uh, you've got, um, let's see, Oh, Jonathan Price. Sorry, I was going through my list. Jonathan Price, Simon Callow. I mean, it's just a really well put together cast to begin with. It's so British. It hurts really. Um, it Everything from the setting to the uh, sensibilities within it, 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 it just really is. Uh, you've got this moment, like I said, when Dickens is feeling completely burned out. He doesn't think that he has another book in him. He doesn't know what to write. And then a chance interaction with a gentleman on the street essentially creates Ebenezer Scrooge for him. And he is seeing Scrooge, you know, the, and the embodiment of that uh, image is played by Plummer so well, you know, like they, they interact and they have these like, bits of dialogue that are really well done, you know, and of course, all of this is just in his head. Uh, but, but it really, really works. And um, you've got his own personal drama, he is struggling to figure out how to put a Christmas Carol together. And he gets feedback from so many different directions. And he's just, he's in kind of a, a darker place, you know, when he's doing this, because there's so much frustration about, you know, the work, the art that he puts together. And, you know, the, all of those interactions are sort of tainted by that sort of inner struggle. And then he, there's this moment when, you know, he has some revel revelations about his relationship with his father, who's played by Jonathan Price. Um, there's just a lot going on. Uh, but at the same time, at the heart of it, it's sort of a story about how the Christmas Carol <laughs> was put together. And I, I just sort of like that. I really enjoy the two different elements, the sort of artistic struggle, and then the knowledge that at the end of all of this, we have this one iconic work that's been completed. We know where it's going. How does he get there? And I really enjoy stories like that. You get to see, I mean, it's, uh, like I mentioned, absolutely fictionalized, but you get to see all of these little pieces of behind the scenes and like what it could have been like. Um, and there, there is especially a lovely sort of a relationship that he has with a young woman in this that I, I, I thought was really, really sort of the heart of the story. She's, she's his tiny Tim. Um, and that's what you're supposed to get. You're supposed to get these little like glimpses of sentimentality and heartwarming moments. It's the holidays. <laughs> so if you're looking for, a inter interesting, like, very, very period piece feeling film. The Man Who Invented Christmas is absolutely wonderful. If you were a Charles Dickens fan, if you're not a Charles Dickens fan and just happen to like period pieces, uh, if you like the idea of a fictionalized biography, those are always really inter entertaining and interesting. Um, make sure you check out uh, The Man Who Invented Christmas. Again, it's available on both Hoopla and on Canopy. All right, my next recommendation is an animated feature available on Hoopla, and that is 1982's The Snowman. The Snowman has virtually no dialogue at all. It's, you know, a visual word poem, I think, is the phrase I saw to describe it most. Uh, it's based on British author Raymond Briggs' 1978 picture book, and it is absolutely gorgeous. It's the... The storyline involves a young boy who builds a snowman on this one beautiful, fantastic day. He goes to sleep and when he wakes up in the middle of the night, he ends up going on this adventure across the sky with a snowman. Because snowmen fly, you know. Um, snowmen are also apparently alive. 
side note, <laughs> but it's, it's gorgeous. Like there's, there's no way else to describe it. I mean, it, it's definitely, it's got that 1980s animated feel and you know, there's no CGI in sight. Um, I, I feel so get off my lawn when I say things like that, but there's just something about animated features that have that drawn hand drawn quality that I, I just think there's something about those. Um, and the music, the music is so beautiful. And it just, it's like this sort of haunting, gorgeous melody. And as they're soaring across the sky, hand in hand, you know, looking down at the British uh, villages and countryside, it, it's just a total mood piece. And that's one of the things that I, one of the reasons I picked this, even without dialogue, uh, to tell you, this is British, it feels very English. And then Yes, I knew that this was based on a British author's picture book, um, but it, it just, there's just this vibe to it that seems very English. I, and, and, and again, it goes back to that idea that there is like a thing that is quintessentially British and it just sort of permeates the arts. Um, you know, he go, this young boy goes on this adventure to the North Pole with the snowman and, and, you know, it, it's very simple in that respect. And, you know, there, there's no, there are no words. You're not like having all of these intense conversations with another, but it doesn't really matter that all of the emotions come across again through the art and through the animation and through the absolutely gorgeous music. Uh, so if you're looking for something interesting, uh, I remembered seeing this when I was a small child, but it had been years since I'd watched it. And so it really, it was really revelatory to rewatch it when I finally did. And, and I, I absolutely loved it. So if you're looking for something quiet and that will definitely feel like atmospheric and introspective, you, you know, make sure you check out 1982's The Snowman on Hoopla. It is absolutely a must watch and thoroughly beautiful. Uh, good for all ages, I think. Uh, and just a wonderful, wonderful uh, holiday film. All right, so it's time for my final recommendation for this week, and this one is available on Hoopla, and that is 2006's Hogfather, the complete miniseries. When I saw this was available, I was thrilled. So the Hogfather is based on a book by Terry Pratchett, and that book is the 20th novel in Terry Pratchett's Discworld series. I love Discworld such a cool series. I'm a massive fantasy and sci-fi fan, so this is totally my wheelhouse. Uh, but I did not know the miniseries is available, <laughs> and I'm so excited. This is actually my pick of the week. What's great about Hogfather is you 100% have to have zero knowledge of Discworld. Zero. Um, go into it realizing that it is absolutely absurd and ridiculous and wonderful, and that's really all all you all you need. Uh, so in The Hogfather, we are dealing with a parallel universe. Um, this is not Britain, but it feels like Britain in a fantasy weird way. Um, it is the night before Hog's Watch, and Hog Hog's Watch is essentially this parallel world's Christmas, and then instead of Santa, we have the Hogfather. Uh, except on this night before Hog's Watch, the hog father has gone missing. He's been abducted uh, and it is up to his granddaughter to find him. So we're dealing with a two part, uh, mini series. It's about three and a half hours in total, I want to say. Uh, and it's a very fast watch. It, I love adventure stories to begin with. And anytime a quest features a female lead. I'm totally on board to at least try it. And they cast this very, very well. So you've got a lot of British character actors that if you watch any British film or television, you'll probably recognize. But the Hogfather's granddaughter is played by Michelle Dockery, who if you were a fan of Downton Abbey, she plays Lady Mary Crawley. She is fantastic in this. Uh, I, I She just does a really, really great job. And she's the one who's going on this quest to find out what has happened to the hog father, her grandfather. Uh, and if you couldn't get the feel already, it is absolutely a strange, weird universe. Um, 
and you've got so many parallels to other like to myth and folklore and other you know fantasy storylines that are really like iconic and Pratchett sort of like plays around with parody and satire and and all of these other themes and it somehow just meshes together in this weird mishmash of things you know into something really fantastic and I really do feel like the Hogfather feels like a great holiday movie <laughs> um again there's it, it goes back to the idea that there is something quintessentially British about things that are produced by um British writers and creators and and again it's not Christmas and it's not Santa Claus but it feels like and it's supposed to, of course it's supposed to. Um, and those sort of, that's how it works as satire and parody of every, all of these themes that we are familiar with. But at the same time, there is that sort of British vibe that comes through. Uh, so if you are looking for an, a quick paced, like it is a very quick paced uh, holiday adventure story, especially one featuring a female lead, make sure you check out Hogfather, the complete miniseries. It's absurd and surreal and just marvelous. So again, pick of the week, Hogfather, available on Hoopla. So we have reached the end of my recommendations for British holiday films. Uh, if you have any suggestions for something that would fit within that category, please, please, please comment with those below. I'm always looking for film recommendations. If you have a recommendation for theme, definitely looking at those. Uh, so, you know, as always, thank you so, so much for joining me. I love putting these lists together again. This week, I got to figure, I was able to discover Hogfather is available in our catalog. You know, how many times do I search through these things? But I had no idea. So make sure you go through and surf through the catalogs as well. You will definitely find something that you will absolutely adore. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and close out this episode. Again, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>